Hello, I'm Bonnie Blackburn, a metal production engineer with Senior Flexonics Pathway. I'm going to explain the various aspects of a bellows design analysis, otherwise known as a BDA. There are five sections to the BDA. The background information, the design conditions, the bellows dimensions, the bellows stresses and cycle life calculations, and the bellows spring rate and effective area. All custom bellows designs should be documented to prove that the design has been analyzed to the proper code, that the design is safe and mechanically stable, the cycle life is in accordance with the specification requirements, the important stress values have been satisfied. The Senior Flexonics Pathway BDA shows all the critical information in a summary format. This presentation is offered to help you interpret the information that is shown on the Senior Flexonics Pathway BDA so the information is more meaningful. The top section of the BDA provides the background information, such as the pathway quote number, your reference number, the engineer who prepared the document, the date and the EDGMA version, and the code or codes used along with a brief description of the part. This section provides information on the design conditions used to design the bellows, such as the design pressure and temperature. For certain special applications, such as refractory line expansion joints, the bellows is designed for a lower temperature than the media. We perform an analysis based on the geometry and the insulation utilized to provide the actual bellows temperature. The allowable stress is listed for the bellows material at the bellows design temperature. This is the modulus of the elasticity of the bellows material at the design temperature, which has been used to calculate the spring rate and the column stability pressure. The room temperature modulus of elasticity is used to calculate the deflection stresses, S5 and S6, for edgema. The weld joint efficiency is 1 if the bellows longitudinal weld is 100% non-destructively examined in accordance with the specified code. The design movements create the deflection stresses that determine cycle life. One complete cycle is based on moving the bellows from the neutral length to position 1, back again through the neutral length to position 2, and then back to the neutral length. The first sample BDA shows the data for one movement criteria. However, the BDA program can analyze up to five movement modes each with a unique cycle life requirement, and can then further delineate whether those movement modes are independent of one another or concurrent. In this second example, the BDA shows 10 cycles of one inch of seismic lateral movement concurrent with the 500 cycles of hot design lateral movement of two inches. That is to say, this design is good for 10 cycles of a combined three inches of lateral movement and 490 cycles of normal design movement. The third section provides dimensional information about the bellows and the convolutions, including the inside and outside diameter, the number of convolutions, the bellows thickness, the number of bellows plies, and the bellows overall length, including any preset. The material thickness is generally stated as the standard sheet gauge thickness. These dimensions fully define the bellows, so that the variables defined in the code calculations, such as pitch and convolution height, may be simply calculated. S2 is the primary membrane stress that runs circumferentially around the bellows convolution, and S1 is the primary membrane stress that runs circumferentially around the bellows tangent. These hoop stress values must be lower than the allowable stress for the bellows material multiplied by the bellows longitudinal weld joint efficiency. S3, the longitudinal membrane stress due to pressure, and S4, the longitudinal bending stress due to pressure, are critical stresses located in the sidewall. These are the stresses that make a U-shaped convolution balloon out into an omega shape. The value of S3 plus S4 is limited to 1.5 times the allowable stress for an annealed bellows. 
that factor increases up to three times the allowable stress for a fully cold worked bellows. A formula from the EDGMA standards is used to calculate what that cold work factor is. S6, your deflection bending, is the primary bending stress influencing fatigue life. This stress runs in the longitudinal direction and is the most severe in the sidewall of the convolution near the crest or the root. There is no upper limit to this stress. It's calculated based on elastic theory, and the value of S6 is generally far in excess of the yield strength of the bellows material. That means that a typical expansion joint bellows undergoes plastic strain during each stroke. The calculated or rated cycle life for a given bellows design varies depending on the specified design code. If ANSI B313 Appendix X or ASME Section 8 are specified, the rated cycle life value should realistically represent the minimum number of cycles that can be absorbed before failure, typically in the hundreds, not the thousands. If the design code is unspecified, the rated cycle life will be based on the EDGMA criteria, which represents an average number of cycles that can be absorbed before failure, typically in the thousands. When multiple movement modes are factored into the bellows design, each with a differing cycle requirements, the bellows life is then verified using a utilization factor. So instead of reporting cycles before failure, the BDA reports cycle life in a percentage of life used. Utilization factors one and under are acceptable. There are two types of squirm or instability that can occur for an internally pressurized bellows. One is called column squirm, similar to the buckling of a column and the other is called in-plane squirm, or localized plastic deformation. Senior Flexonics Pathway calculates stability pressures for column and in-plane criteria, and the lowest of the two values is stated on the BDA. The value shown on the BDA is the predicted squirm pressure with a safety factor of 2.25. The BDA spring rates are the effective working spring rates for the bellows, based on the design movements at temperature. Torsional spring rate is offered for those pipe stress analysts that are using a bellows characteristics in a pipe stress program. Bellows are not generally designed for torsional movements. However, the torsional stiffness value can affect the output of a pipe stress analysis. That includes the expansion joint. The bellows effective area is the area of the bellows that creates pressure thrust when acted upon by the operating pressure. The system anchors and or the hardware on the expansion joint must be designed to withstand the pressure thrust at the operating and test conditions. Thanks for joining us for our presentation on the BDA. If you have any questions regarding the BDA, use the Ask an Expert link on our website and one of our engineering experts will follow up with you. You can also call us at 1-800-847-5746.